Hi, everybody. I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the Sin Shop Podcast. Now, hopefully you've been tuning into our Friday night main show, as well as our Monday night project streams. Unfortunately, in our last episode, we had a fairly serious glitch, and it made the majority of the video unusable. So I basically cut around the burnt parts, and I have a small snippet here of the post game with our guest, Sarah Petkus. Now, we believe that the audio issues have been solved, so this should not be the situation going forward. We do want to thank you for watching and bearing with us through our awkward youth phase. And if this is our awkward youth phase, then puberty is going to be a hot mess. But at any rate, for information about the shop, you can head over to sinshop.org. And for upcoming events, you can go to meetup.com slash sinshop. And links are down there in the doobly-doo. So, with no further ado, here's a small taste of the three-hour-long show from last Friday night. And always remember, you can catch the entire main show Friday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, and our project nights on Monday night, also at 7.30 p.m. at twitch.tv forward slash sinshop. And as always, I am the Mighty Pong, and we thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Oh, now I'm going to play the logo twice, and it all goes to hell. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, dead gum kids, and that's going to flip back to that one. Oh, my God. Show is off the, <laughs> off the rails. But we're back. Hello. Right. Hey. Hi out there. Hi. Okay. Hi. So special guest here from uh, from Detroit. Uh, Crux had to uh, had to disappear in a flurry of DEF CON activity. Uh, so mm. we brought in uh, Thomas Tusano uh, from the uh, the great state of Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, and we're gonna we're gonna keep the party rolling. So now. Before the show, I told Thomas, I was like, hey, can you be on the post game with us? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I said, oh, wait, well, you know what? We should, we should probably check to make sure the audio is working. Because I, I would hate to tell this story and the audio not be working. We, we do have the audio issues fixed. Okay, so it's, the, it's, my, it's my sound card. Mackie, you've let me down again. Dead cool. kids. Anyway, he was very excited to find out that you were on the Mythbusters show. That you were a contestant to possibly potentially be a Mythbusters person. A Mythbusters yeah. guy. Person, girl. A, a myth, maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> I Man. He's a little blushy. Uh, so... But... <laughs> I, I have this gag I refer to. So this is on. This is actually on the Great Noise podcast a year and a so long ago. Huh. Um, I made a joke that it's Pope Savage because he went to Pony Ride. If you know Vermont and Bagley in Southwest, because you said you were from Detroit. I, uh, yeah. There's a co-op space called Pony Ride, and he went to Pony Ride and he called it a maker space. And I have no offense to that because it's Adam Savage. If he calls something a maker space, it's a maker space. So I called him Pope Savage that he sanctified Pony Ride a maker space, but he didn't come to I3 to visit us and and so on. And so so little little bit of salt, a little bit of joke, but Adam Savage is one of my my heroes. So I was like, oh my god, I like lost my my collective shit i was like oh my god pong a mythbuster oh my god and he's like dude calm down she's human and i'm like but mythbuster pong and he's no. like <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh. yeah I, mean, I have the highest respect for for the mythbusters i am a i am a myth um like candidate maybe like a myth we called ourselves myth maybes i think among other things, but like, no, 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 I'm not in the stratus as the gods had called them the old gods. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are, no, they are. Um, like, I don't think, like, Adam was really nice. He came and he gave us, like, his his blessing, I guess, because he happened to be on, like, the same set as us, like, the first day we were there. But, um, like, they had nothing to do with us. They were like, whatever, like, have fun, you guys, with your doing, whatever that is. So, like, that was all i saw of them that for that whole process because yeah. <laughs> yeah they were they were doing their own things at that point in time right like they they were free and able to run like wild to the fields right <laughs> peace see ya like just just <laughs> change his hide him in just <laughs> deuces yes <laughs> yeah. Have fun, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun, you crazy kids. Yeah, don't 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 wreck her up too bad. You know, we might want to 
bust that out at some point in the future. Like it, it was weird with Mythbusters because the the last season or two seasons, I think, were just great. Oh, no. I absolutely yeah. loved those. And I feel like what happened in those two seasons were uh, uh, they basically told the producers to go pound sand down a rat hole. This is our last season. Go away. You know, <laughs> like, I, I, I wonder that. I don't know that that's true, but I wonder that. You know what I mean? Because the yeah. last. Two I... seasons... Yeah, go ahead. Well, wait, you're saying they were bad or were they good? They were great. They were... The last two seasons, they, were great. they had a whole different look to them. They had a whole different attitude to them because the directors weren't pushing that BS, uh, 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 hey, uh, you guys should fight more. There needs to be more conflict. And I, did, I didn't see um, that at all in the last season. I, it's, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, before we started the, the streaming, like I, like when I, when they, like when I was talking to the producer to be on the show, like they're like, what's your favorite episode of Mythbusters? And I was like, I haven't seen any of them. Ha! <laughs> I um so I, I don't know um like I have I have seen some but like not enough to have like a favorite because they're like what's your favorite myth what's your least favorite myth and why and I was just like I don't remember like like I know that I respect the guys because they're kind of in the same maker circle as like a lot of the maker people that you know go to maker fair or whatever and I've seen them around and I, I appreciate what they do for the community but like I have no idea like what season is better than another season or like which one was great which one sucked i have no idea if anyone um, ever asks you what your favorite mythbusters episode was it's very easy all you have to do is say the one with the concrete truck does they blow it up <laughs> why like, <laughs> they, <laughs> blow it up is an understatement they, they they blew it up to the point where there wasn't a truck anymore like, really? Like there, a there wasn't even a fender. Truck. I swear to God, they filled the entire. So the myth was right. The, I, I love like accelerant or something. So the, the well, the myth of the show was that they put uh, that there was a guy that had uh, 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 concrete that set up in the in the back of the truck, right? And to get it out, okay. he used dynamite to break up the the cement. That was the myth, right? Well, they couldn't get the cement to break up. Like it was just it was in there, and that that is what the situation was. That truck was going to have it in there until the day they crushed it, and so they were like, okay, okay. well this this truck's cash. We're done with this truck. It's not. It, this is no longer a cement truck, and so they loaded the back of it up with Semtex. They had someone from the uh, L.A. Uh, uh, I want to say Alameda County or, or some county. They had the sheriff basically on the bomb squad come out and load it up with as pretty much as much Semtex as they had. <laughs> and when they blew it up, it made the coolest sound. It was like, boom! <laughs> <laughs> and there was no truck! Like, like there was no truck. There wasn't a piece left bigger than like that. But yeah, so that's, there's your easy answer. If any, if you ever want to, want to like, if you ever get asked that question again, oh, the one with the cement truck, definitely, of course. Okay. If I ever, if I ever am talking to the producer for some reason and they ask me what my favorite episode right, exactly. is, yeah. I will charm him by by mentioning the cement truck exploding Absolutely. into vapor. Okay. Pretty much. Fair enough. Yeah. There you go. There we go. All right. So we are we are back once again with the Renegade Master. It's a really old reference. But uh, yeah, so so welcome back. Uh, I was actually just saying about uh, that it's interesting hearing uh, about the concept behind Chibon. Like you know, I'm gonna make this thing. So so it's interesting because you kind of created that to solve a mental problem that you had. Not a mental problem, but uh, like to solve a uh, societal problem that you saw. Right? Am I off base on that? Or... Yes. Yeah. No, you're right. So. Well, okay, now that does go against, actually, that goes against what we were talking about earlier, because we were saying that you don't start from a point of solving a problem. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, like, with, with care, like, when I'm making um, something that's based on, like, a character of mine, which a lot of my robots are, like, they're based on, like, uh, like character designs or narratives, that is the case. By use by having the robot Doodlefoot, are you also making a point? I don't want to say hiding behind, but almost using Noodlefoot as a puppet. 
to say, you know, here's um, the point I'm trying to make. You know what I mean? Um, wait, say, what do you mean? Like, what are you asking? Well, so, like, so, uh, instant, so, for instance, like, one could say, uh, just to extrapolate blindly here, okay? Uh, Noodlefoot wants yeah. to travel to other planets and taste them. Could that be yeah. kind of a, uh, um, I want to experience new things, or I want to... Um, you know, a way of saying, I want to experience things that I've never experienced before in a way that I've never experienced them before. You see what I'm saying? Like, kind of I talking mean, through Noodlefoot. I think, yeah, like, ultimately everything I make is just an extension of myself. Yeah. Like, like, my partner always teases me about being, like, like high-functioning schizophrenic. And, um, and Noodlefeet is effectively, like, a part of, of me and, like, my needs and, like, what Sarah, like some part of Sarah is doing. Mm -hmm. Um, when I kind of deep dive, like deep dove noodle as a project, like on my own, I kind of came to realize that, uh, he represented a part of me that, um, when I was younger, um, I really wanted to be, uh, like a space scientist or an astronaut, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to choose that as my career path. And there was this memorable point in my life where somebody sat me down and said, Hey, look, Sarah, if you want to be like an astronaut or work at NASA, that's something that you can do. Um, but it's going to involve a lot of math and a lot of school and a lot of engineering and a lot of these things. But uh, you are a creative person that likes to draw and make things. And you're probably not going to get to do as much of that. You're going to have to make that a hobby. And I remember when I really thought about it, I made this decision to kind of go away from what I really wanted in life because creativity was so important to me. And I knew that I wasn't going to fulfill that part of myself if I had chose the career path that led me to the thing I wanted. So I had to effectively at a very young age, let that dream die. Mm. And I think in the sense that we always kind of force our, our abandoned dreams on our kids. Um, I made this thing that I refer to as my child and he happens to want he aspires to go into space and react for his own, you know, his own reasons on the planet, doing things that he wants to do that aren't influenced by science or engineering. He does them his way, which is what I would do if I were an artist in space. So he represents wow. that aspect of myself that I had to let die. <laughs> wow. That Damn, make you're going deep. You know what I mean? I think the the, the role of the artist is to... Um, frame frame something that's going on in the world in such a way that people view it in as such that it incites a feeling in them that causes a reaction like if you take like Banksy's like a really easy one everyone knows him sure like he's talking about like concepts and ideas that everyone's familiar with but he's framing them in such a way that they strike the nerve in people effectively and it causes them to react in a meaningful way that they take with them and it causes change. And I think that effective artists, their art is doing that. They create the best possible frame given like the political, social, political tapestry at the time. And I think that like the most effective artists today are, are out there doing that given the circumstances. Um, I mean, now that I think about it, like are you guys familiar with Ars Electronica? I have to bring it up. Ars Electronica? Important no, I'm not. Oh, I like that. It's ringing a bell, but it's not completely there. It's um, it's a really great um, it's a art and technology and philosophy festival that takes place in Linz, Austria, every summer in September, and it's one of the coolest experiences you could possibly go and like be a part of because there's nothing that I've found in the U.S. that's comparable uh, at all. It's sort of its own animal. But um, it's just technology and art and things that will really make you think about like the world and what we're going towards. Like if we're the, if we're the train that's just sort of like going choo-choo in a direction out of control, like it's all about that and what it means to be on that train. Um, the train being like technology that we're just sort of creating in abundance for ourselves without really any thought of, well, some thought, but not enough thought about how it's going to affect humanity and what it means for what we're evolving into as people. 
So it's a lot of thoughts. Like it's a very good place to kind of like get your head like like filled with really good information and really good insightful things that will really like like get you thinking, Love. inspire you, change you. A lot of strokey beard conversations like, hmm, I wonder. Hmm. So you had mentioned yes. earlier using like TensorFlow. I think that was what? That was in Noodlefoot, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, do yeah. You, so what are your thoughts on how, like, because you mentioned like people are doing these things, but not really taking into <laughs> account how it's going to affect the future. So what are you what are your thoughts on uh, on AI? Do you do you see this going in a in a direction similar to Elon Musk or uh. my uh like part of Noodles like I guess artist statement is uh since he is my child and that that like metaphor is there. Yeah. Um one of the things that I talk about in regard to him is uh how humanity like we're basically like our technology is our child, right? We made it. Mm -hmm. um, we created this thing, and it represents the best parts of ourselves. And we are raising it to come into its own. And while we're doing that, we need to... We, we have a choice. We can either be good parents or we can be parents. Yeah. Um, parents would be like, hey, um, this is my expectation. You need to meet it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you like grow and become your own thing. You need to be what I expect you to be. And you need to make me proud and do what I want you to do and fulfill my expectations. Otherwise, there'll be consequences. Mm. And we kind of do that right now, I think, with our technology. Like, it's it's commoditized. Okay. Um, corporations, like, develop technology mostly to, to make them money and serve them in a specific way. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of shitty with our technology. So if, like, we are developing AI, um, we need to kind of keep that in check. Um, because I think that that's going to matter more once we kind of broach that threshold. Um, I think that we need to try and be good parents for talking about AI and not treat it like some sort of utility that like a corporation owns. We need to treat it like it's its own thing and try to holdy handy it while we're, we're like understanding what it is and what its role is in our lives. Cause it is our child. Yeah. And I think that there are there are a lot of opportunities for us to misstep there and we need to kind of be mindful not to do that. And it's not even really on the table as something that like we discuss really for sure. That's awesome. Sweet. Uh, Jim again says uh, you helped Smitty Halibut on some projects. I did. I did. Um, uh, so back when. Uh, OK. Uh, during like my first, second, third, fourth um, DEF CON. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was getting my toes soggy in the DEF CON juice, which is something that like Jeff holds near and dear to his heart. Um, this guy came by the shop during the first year that I, I knew Jeff or Crux um, and had ever even like thought of going to DEF CON. Um, I can't say that. I had fantasized about going to DEF CON since I was very young, but I had no reason to go to it until that year of my life when suddenly like hardware was a thing that I was doing. I didn't have anyone to go with until I met all the people from Sin Shop. So that mm. prompted the, the excursion to go because I suddenly knew people to experience it with. So it was like a huge time for me. Uh, I just met Crux and this mysterious character shows up at the shop on like a normal day and it was Smitty. And he had this awesome idea for this uh, uh, competition at DEF CON called uh, Darknet, the DEF CON Darknet, hmm. which was this interactive experience where you had to actually like go around the con and talk to people and solve puzzles actively, just like in the book kind of demon, mm -hmm. um, to unlock kind of like, a uh, you know, those books where you have to choose your adventure, yeah. um, kind of like that, but in real life, you have to solve puzzles and talk to people and do quests and to pick up skills, which was the whole point in and of itself. And um, back when I first met them and they were conspiring to do this, I just did their graphic design work because that's something that I can do. So I had no part in like the intellectual part of it. That was them putting it together. But um, I did the pretty, the pretty brandy, brandy, brandy things that people got oh, to see on paper. Nothing wrong with that. That's, that's a science in and, of, in and of itself. So. It was it was cool. It was an exciting time. So, all right, Sarah, where can they find you at? In addition to uh, what I, I forgot the dadgum link. I probably Jonas, 
And Zonus.com is my site. Um, can one of, you, one of you be so kind as to type in at S-P-E-T-K-U? Done. That's me on everything. Instagram, Twitter, like everything. That is that is the mother handle of the Sarah. And uh, yeah, Zonus is like my main page. And if you are interested in my videos, like all the things I was talking about meticulously documenting, if you go to Robohemian on YouTube, that's a R-O-B-O-H-E-M-I-A-N. If you type that into the search on YouTube, you will find my channel. It's me, a picture of me eating a, I think it's a, what is that? a popsicle. Yeah. And you'll find all of my robot videos of me making shibon and noodle feet and whatever, all the other stuff. Anywho. All right, let's get out of here. I got chicken coming. Let's, let's, let's end this thing. I don't know what you, what yeah, you do. I've been. Oh, you're just vibing? No, nah, I just, yeah, yeah just vibing. Uh, <laughs> this, if this goes too much longer, I'm going to start flossing. So, you know, we don't know. Yeah, we don't want to see that. No. Oh, you should totally do it. <laughs> I just want to see if he can. Oh, I can. I think oh. we should all do it at the nah. same time. No. Nah. Oh, man. Look at, the, I, look at the time. Look at the time. We, look at, uh, see? Oh, oh look, whoa, look at that. We got to go. Oh, oh boy. Gotta, oh, I got to stay. Oh. It's you over said there. we're supposed to end on a high note, right? <laughs> No, no, no. I can't. I can't possibly do anything that, that oh. crazy. That's just, that's just, oh, that's just crazy. Matt. Right. But, I, but I can show off this, this lovely Sin Shop podcast t-shirt, which you can get at the Burge store if you're doing one of these. <laughs> so. This one's discontinued, but there's a new one uh, at at my stuff. So All yeah, right. look, he is flossing. Ah, no, 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 I'm no, no, nope. I was just displaying a shirt. That's all I was doing. All right, we gotta get out of here. This show's gone completely off the rails. Have a good night, everybody. Make sure you tune in right here on Monday night for our project night, and come back here next week. I promise we'll be sane, and we might even have the audio issues fixed. Uh, and as always, you can go to sinshop.org for more information about the shop. Uh, you can uh, hit up our Twitch page, twitch.tv forward slash sinshop. Every donation that you make or merch that you buy goes directly to help the shop, and we really, really, really appreciate it, especially now, memberships and whatnot. Uh, but at any rate, we thank you very much for, for joining us on our ridiculous journey tonight. Thanks again for uh, for the uh, the raid that we had, DEFCON uh, 201 Live and Bald Engineer. Thank you so much for, for, the, for the raids. We really, really appreciate that. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, everybody, have a great night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Take care, everyone. And we got the links down below, uh, over, over there, -ish. over there. It's always over there. It's not there, there. It's not the way I look at it. It's the way you look at it. Things to know. Okay, let's try again. PSAs, baby. Okay. <laughs>